Welcome back to Beyond the Uniform. I'm Justin Asiri, and each week I meet with military veterans to learn about their civilian career, what they do, how they got there, and advice for other veterans seeking to do the same. Today's episode number 192 with Bob Widoar. I decided that uh, my family had moved, you know, 17 times in 22 years. And I was going to let them choose where we were going to live. So that's, that's how I did it. It's a little bit different than, than the most traditional advice. And so that's what we did. And we decided that San Antonio was going to be um, where we were going to end up when I retired. Well, my guest today made the transition to civilian workforce after 22 years of military service with the U.S. Marine Corps. His current employer, Combined Insurance, actively recruits military veterans and actually guarantees that every single military veteran and their spouse can have an interview at Combined Insurance. We cover a lot of ground in this episode, including why veterans should consider sales, larger companies, and companies that target military veterans. A special thanks to Steve Bain for setting up this interview, and an added thanks to Combined Insurance for sponsoring this episode and making it possible for us to continue to do these sorts of interviews at Beyond the Uniform. Uh, as always, at beyondtheuniform.io, you'll find show notes. And with that, let's dive in to my conversation with Bob. Joining me today in Chicago, Illinois, is Bob Wiedauer. Uh Bob, welcome to Beyond the Uniform. Thanks a lot, Justin. I appreciate being here, and I appreciate you having me on the show. So I wanted to give listeners a quick glimpse about your background. Uh, Bob is the Vice President of Sales Development and Military Programs at Combined Insurance, which is a Chubb company. Combined Insurance is a leading provider of supplement accident, uh, supplemental accident health and life insurance products in North America. Combined Insurance Company of America is committed to helping people find the coverage they need at a price they can afford. Bob served as an officer in the Marine Corps for over 22 years and worked as an executive director at USAA for 15 years prior to joining Combined Insurance. Um, so, Bob, maybe to start things off, if someone is listening and they're on active duty, how would you explain to them what Combined Insurance is? Yeah, thanks, Justin. Uh, combined Insurance provides supplemental insurance, as you mentioned, and supplemental insurance is uh, the uh, coverage that takes over after uh, major medical, um, over and above major medical. So. Let's say that you um, you broke your leg and, and couldn't work. Well, you have a major medical uh, policy that's going to cover the hospital care, the doctor's visits, the, the actual cast, and, and all the things that go along with the actual breaking of your leg. But what it doesn't pay for is the money that you're losing because your leg is broken when you can't work. Um, you can't uh, you can't actually earn earn a uh, uh, a living. So supplemental insurance uh, pays you for that time time that you're out, uh, or that time that you're sick or or injured. Mm. That's great. It's um, probably everyone feels this way, but I I, I had a I uh, broke my hand last year mountain biking and. You're right. Like the insurance covered the you know much of the surgery and kind of the immediate. Uh, problem, but then there's so much fallout anytime you have an accident of not being able exactly. to work as much and not, you know, all of these other things that you're kind of left high and dry with from an insurance standpoint. So it sounds like you really step in to cover those other areas um, that, that still affect people but are not covered by traditional insurance. That, that's correct. And uh, another another example that that happens frequently is if you um, happen to have a, a child, a child gets hurt or injured. Well, obviously a medical uh, insurance policy is going to cover any of their problems, but you, it doesn't cover the time it takes for you to take that child to the doctor or to get the care necessary or to uh, to hire additional help needed to to care for that child while they're at home or something along those lines. So it helps in that respect as well. Mm. And for listeners, how would you explain what what does that title mean? So, Vice President Sales Development and Military Programs. Could you could you kind of translate that to what you actually do? Sure, I, I have uh, uh, several different responsibilities here at, at Combined Insurance. Um, a, a large portion of them are to uh, assist in the sales development, uh, assist in, in increasing sales and, and building. Uh, leaders of our sales agents and and things along those lines. Uh, part of my 
responsibilities here is also to run the military programs. I have a uh, military program manager that I work with as well who's mostly who, who uh, spends 100% of his time on military programs, uh, trying to hire as many veterans as we can, trying to um, uh, build uh, support networks within our organization to uh, help veterans both uh, transitioning from the military and, and supporting them while they're here uh, with, with any needs that they may have. Uh, also, we uh, do community giving type uh, programs uh, to veteran organizations. Uh, we, we run that out of this office as well. Uh, so we do do a lot of different things, and uh, it, it's all it's all kind of focused, at least on the military, to to hire as many veterans as we can and support them while they're here at Combined. That's great. I mean, I think it's it's such an incredible sign anytime you see an institution and or, or an organization that has specifically people who are focused on military and the veteran community. And I love that it's not just the um, active hiring of these people, but it sounds like a lot of that is supporting vets once they're in the organization, helping them make that transition, giving them the resources to be successful there. That's a great, uh, I just think that's a great hallmark of the company you work at that they have devoted serious resources to that it's not just uh you, you do hear a lot of organizations that are like yeah we want to hire vets but the fact that your title has that in it it's it's a sign that they're putting their money where their mouth is and that that's that is a um a big priority at at combined insurance yeah, exactly uh, you know obviously being in this uh in this arena you meet a lot of people from other organizations um, you know that are at hiring events or or things such as that, and and there are a lot of companies that that, that uh, uh, claim to have you know claim to be veteran friendly and things like that. But when you start uh, digging into exactly what they do, um, a lot fewer of them actually have programs designed uh, for veterans and and to support veterans uh, after hiring. So um, we, we're one of those, and, and we're, we, uh, we definitely, definitely see the value in veterans, and not only from a just wanting to be a you know, good corporate citizen and, and hire our uh, transitioning service members, but um, they make the greatest employees. So uh, we see their value in, in our organization, not just from a patriotic standpoint. Mm. And maybe if someone is listening and they're, they're curious about um, working at Combined Insurance. Could you talk maybe about some of the different career opportunities available at Co Combined Insurance? Yeah, we have, uh, we're an insurance company, so we have all the different uh, um, careers that an insurance company we have. We have actuaries, we have uh, finance folks, we have underwriters, we have um, uh, IT uh, individuals, uh, but the the largest, the bulk of our workforce are sales agents, and this is this is really where um, the the veteran uh, the the uh, veteran would be appropriate anywhere, uh, but that's where we're really kind of focusing our efforts for a couple of reasons. Number one is um, our sales agents need to be very ethical. That we're a, we're a highly regulated industry, so they need to, to to do what's best for the customer, which you know obviously veterans do. Um, they need to be able to overcome obstacles. They need to be able to talk to people. They need to have a service mentality to uh, serve others and especially community members, which is um, obviously what our insurance uh, does provide. Uh, and uh, they they need to to be able um, or, or or the sales jobs anyway are uh, very. Uh, merit based so the the more the better you are, the higher you go in the company and it 's not based on a quota it 's not based on um, uh, anything else other than just your merit so I think those those traits really tie into uh, a veteran 's uh, generic personality everybody 's a little bit different the The other thing is that our our sales process is very uh, structured. But it's it's uh, structured in a way that can be used um, however you design or desire to use it and, and when you desire to use it. So 
I think I think that uh, kind of um, coincides very nicely with a veteran's uh, thought process too, because as you know, in the military, you have a checklist for everything, but uh, and and you're expected to follow that checklist, but you're also expected to to follow mission type orders to get the job done. However, it however you can get that job done. So it's a very structured process that can be used in flexible ways. And again, I think that that really suits a, a veteran's um, experience. And, and I want to go off on a bit of a tangent here because I know that in talking to so many different veterans over the years, a lot of times um, veterans have, or people in the military, um, and I, I would put myself in this group as well, when you're in the military, there is an adverse reaction to a sales title. And a lot of the people that I've spoken with have cited the fact that um, either they, they dislike the thought of selling or there's a fear of um, having a role that's commission-based in some way. And I, I just want to kind of throw in from my lens that the, one of the best pieces of advice I got in business school at Stanford from Irv Grosbeck, who's one of the owners of the Boston Celtics, incredibly successful man. And he had just talked about how sales is one of the most important and critical functional roles that he ever sees. And he would prescribe this as advice, no matter your desired career path, of how critical sales are. And as an entrepreneur, I can attest to, you know, you are selling employees to work for you, you are selling investors to invest in you, or you are selling customers to buy from you, you're selling customers to stay with you. Everything in my world seems like sales. And so when I think of people who are listening who are on active duty, this sort of sales role, while, while um, initially it may not strike you as something that you're interested in, I would really encourage you, whether it's at Combined Insurance or somewhere else, to really consider a sales role. It is probably not what you're thinking, It's and it's something that um, you have done a lot in the military, even if you haven't viewed it as sales. When you are getting your team rallied behind you to do something, when you are pitching an idea to a group of people that may not want to do this, there is so much sales that I've seen in the military, even if you don't view it as sales. And so a- apologies, Bob, I didn't want to kind of go off on my own tangent here, but I just think that the opportunity that you're providing to veterans in terms of sales, it is a skill set that is so important, regardless of what they do 10 years from now, that it's a great way to start by by uh, getting that skill set and getting that experience. And especially, you know, given that merit-based act, um, aspect that you talked about, I think that's something that would connect with a lot of veterans of wanting to do something where you're just measured by your performance. There's no politics. There's no BS. It is 100% about your capabilities. And I think tactics and execution is where vets really excel across the board. And so being judged by your execution is a great advantage. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for that, Justin. I appreciate it. Uh, You know, often people that, that have that kind of mental state that I could never do sales are thinking about those people that are selling things that are probably not the best products and they're probably selling them to people that don't need those products and, and, it's, and it's a real chore uh, to do and you're trying to convince somebody of something that they don't really need or don't really want. And that, that's not the case, at least not here at, at Combined Insurance. I mean, our products are, um, are useful to just about every American. Um, they are, you know, competitively priced. They're they're uh, very very uh, solid products. We have a solid financial foundation here. So you're you're you're, you're doing needs based analysis with these um, community members and figuring out what their risks what risks they are currently experiencing and then fulfilling. Uh, products that will solve those risks for them. So it's not the traditional, hey, I've got to, I've got to sell this thing to you, even though you don't need it. Um, it it's very, very needs-based selling. So uh, I think, I think from that respect, it's, it's a little bit different than what most people uh, envision, as well. And you know, another thing that comes through from the 190 interviews I've done prior to this is, I, I would say it's, it's safe to say that most people who come from the military are both mission and purpose driven. And our military service, it met a need for many of us of having, you know, contributing something bigger than ourselves. 
And I think that's one reason why it's important for listeners to consider at least joining companies that have strong values behind them. And I just did an um, interview with um, someone in the blockchain space, and they were talking about how much values drove them being involved in that space. And what I think is great about what Combined Insurance is doing is, at essence, like the goal is to protect people and their families and to keep people safe. And that's very much aligned with what many people were doing in the military. You're, you're, you're protecting exactly. families, you're keeping people safe. And so I, I like that you pointed that out, Bob. It's like selling is easy if you believe in the product. Like I, I will talk to anyone who listens about REI. I love REI as a company. I love their products. I'm selling it for free when I'm talking to friends over a beer. It's it's a similar thing. If, if you believe in the values behind what Bob's talking about, it becomes easier to sell it because it's, it's not really selling. You're just talking about something and solving a problem. You're solving someone's acute problem and, and keeping them safe. That's exactly right. Um, could you talk more about kind of what um, your day-to-day -day life looks like? I know it's kind of helpful for people who are listening at, um, and they hear your title with sales development and military programs. I know a lot of listeners have written in and, and, and talk about how much they benefit from hearing the nitty gritty. And so whether that's just um, today or just a representative day, if you could kind of walk us through what a day looks like and the types of activities you're doing throughout the day. Of course, uh, like I mentioned before, my my job responsibilities are are broad. So um, that's one of the the uh, the really the things that I really love about my job is that I get to do a lot of different things during the day. Um, today on a Monday, of course, it's a it's a big. Um, we try to start the week off uh, fast on on sales. So we have uh, sales um, sales meetings every Monday. And uh, get the get the staff together and and talk about all the things that are going on and how we're going to uh, um, help motivate uh, and encourage the sales force this week. Uh, we also talk about um, the things that are coming up that are going to have an impact on on the sales force, whether it's new um, IT, whether it's uh, different uh, products that we're going to offer or changes to existing products or. Uh, that sort of thing. Anyway, we have kind of a staff meeting and just kind of talk over those things. Um, we also, uh, from time to time, um, do uh, uh, veteran hiring events. Um, those usually we probably do one one of those a week or so between me and my uh, my military program manager, um, and that's usually kind of an all day event, uh, whether it's uh, uh, here in Chicago or someplace else across the country, and try to hire veterans. Um, we also, uh, or I also, deal with some of the sales agents uh, directly if they're having a, a particular issue that I can help them with. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that. I also deal with uh, the leaders, the uh, sales managers, and, and hire up uh, individuals who uh, might need some assistance in uh, trying to find uh, ways to, again, further ways to, to motivate the, the salespeople. Uh, we're also doing, I also spent some time today uh, looking at results and, um, you know, trying to figure out where I can apply some uh, support to, to assist in, in the sales efforts uh, and leadership efforts, uh, that kind of thing. So it, it's, uh, it's very, you know, it's very uh, uh, widespread. Uh, we, uh, we deal with real estate, so we have offices, you know, small little offices across the country that I, I kind of lead the efforts on. Uh, designing or uh, uh, determining which uh, which offices to expand, to extend their leases, to build out new ones, etc. Uh, I have a, a program manager that that uh, takes care of that for me, um, and uh, just a lot of, a lot of different things. A lot of different things. That's great. I love the variety. I bet that keeps things fresh and interesting to have so many different aspects to be to be uh, running with. Sure. Yep. Um, what about, I, I imagine you've seen so many different military applicants at Combined Insurance, and I'm just wondering if anything stands out as common mistakes that veterans make when they apply to a job or when they're, when they're interviewing that you would highlight for listeners to be aware of. The... 
the most common mistakes that that we that I've seen are um, pretty 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 standard. It's the ones uh, the the resumes that um, uh, have military acronyms, military uh, job titles uh, that that are totally military that that most people most uh, civilian organizations don't even won't even understand what mm-hmm. they do. And, and when they interview, they do the same thing, talk, talk in military terms only. Um, but, I, but I do want to say that um, combined insurance will guarantee any veteran or their spouse an interview for a job. We can't guarantee a position, but we'll guarantee uh, an interview, uh, especially for one of our sales positions. So um, that, that kind of alleviates the problem with the resume. It doesn't alleviate the problem with the, with the interview, however. So I still want to still want to um, uh, kind of you know talk about uh, talk about things in a, in civilian terms that you did in your uh, military career. Yeah, that's um, it's good that you point that out. I think it is a common um, shortcoming of of people in the military is is just not having had. For anyone listening, if you're spending five or ten years or more on service, that's that's time where your counterparts are spending refining their stories and, and interviewing and having to go through this process and getting better at it. And so when you exit the military, you're competing with people who have been doing this for a decade. And not only that, that the jobs that they've done are probably easily understood by the by the hiring manager and the person making that exactly. decision. And so it's worth that extra time of especially meeting and talking to people who aren't from the military to be able to tell them your story and have them point out those blind spots about terms that you don't even realize are particular to the military. It's just so ingrained. It's like it's like a, a, a new, it's, it's, it's a language you've spoken your whole life. You don't even realize that, that other people don't understand it. And so having those people to point out those blind spots and, and also getting some practice of telling these stories and those common interview questions that are asked and being able to talk about your accomplishments, being able to talk about your, your previous failures, but doing it in a way that the hiring manager can really understand rather than needing a, uh, an interview interpreter to, to figure out what it is that you're, right. you're describing. Um, could you talk about um, if, if someone is listening and they were interested, I think it's incredible that, first of all, that you guarantee those interviews. So if someone was I- interested in applying, could you kind of walk through what that application process looks like and in, in broad terms what the, the interview process looks like? Sure. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. Obviously, we have a website, combinedinsurance.com, and it's got a, a hiring uh, or an employment um, page on there that you could go to and, and uh, select that you were interested. Or you can, um, uh, you know, contact uh, contact me or the home office or, or anybody, and, and we'll be happy to link you up with a with a local person. The the interview, especially for our sales positions, the interview uh, is kind of uh, Three steps. Uh, the, th- the the first step is to just meet with the the local sales manager in the area, um, just to kind of get a, a good sense of who you are, and you can get a good sense of who we are. And there'll be you know obviously some question and answer period there, but it's just more of a uh, get to know you type session. But then the the next step is that we will send you out with a uh, with an agent to to do a, a daily, I mean a, a full day of uh, sales, just a, and we call it a demonstration, uh, to make sure that it's something that you can do and that you would want to do, um, and that's step two. And then the step, the, the final step would be to meet back with the sales manager and just kind of go over that uh, demonstration day, the demo day, and um, kind of get you know answer any que- more questions you have you, for you to answer any questions that you have. Um, et cetera. So, and then, and then uh, the next step after that is if both uh, parties are uh, satisfied and, and think that this would be a good fit, then, then we will fly you to Chicago for a week of uh, sales training. We'll put you up in a hotel and, and feed your meals and things like that. Uh, and then 
After that, uh, you would go back to your uh, location, wherever that is, and um, our, again, our sales managers would kind of uh, continue that training process uh, to make to make sure that you're successful. So that's kind of how the interview and, and uh, onboarding process works. I, I think the most incredible part of that process is that second step where you go out for a day to actually be in the field and see what that's like. I'm, I'm trying to think of the jobs I'm aware of where you're able to get that uh, actual view. That, that's one of the things that's always frustrating me with interviews is that on both the interviewee side and the interviewer side, it's so artificial. It's It's trying to ask people questions right. and put them in situations. And it's, I, I honestly can't think off the top of my head of a job where I've seen where you do get, as part of that interview process, you get to see what it's like. You get to, it's, there's no smoke and mirrors. You're out on That's these right. calls and you're getting a sense of like, is this something that I could get excited for? And I think that's great because I imagine for those who opt out of that, it saves both of you time. It saves them the time of going through the training and then realizing they don't like it. And it saves you the resources because it sounds like that week of training and in the hotel, that's, it's, it's a considerable expense to train it each is. employee. So you, you save yourself that by if the person isn't a good fit or, or realizes like, oh, maybe this is not the ideal career for me. Correct. Yep. And, and I, right. I was just also, and I'll put this in the show notes for listeners, but I was just looking at your, um, the career page on combinedinsurance.com. And it, it's also seems like this would be relevant to a lot of veterans because I'm seeing a sales agent in Wyoming, central New York, Florida, southwestern Georgia. Like it, it is very broad coverage across the United States in sort of terms of locations. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah, it's, it's uh, continental U.S. Uh, wide uh, right now. And the, the other thing I wanted to mention, Justin, is that the jobs are portable. And so if you, uh, if you end up starting out in uh, Florida someplace and, and your family moves to um, uh, Pennsylvania, I'm just making those, those places up, the job goes with you. So you basically continue to do what you were doing in Florida in Pennsylvania. Now this, that, that may not be as valuable to some, uh, but the, the, the people that it's very valuable for, at least in my opinion, is military spouses who, you know, they want, they want really two things in a job. They want flexibility and they want portability. And this job offers both of those. Uh, it's flexible. You, like I mentioned, we have a very structured sales process when you can, one in which you can use when and, and how you want to. Uh, so if you want to drop your, if you need to drop your kids off every morning at uh, 8 a.m. at school, then you can do that and, and go to work after that, or pick them up in the evening or, or whatever. But it's also portable. And so again, if a military spouse. If the, the service member moves, um, the, you, the spouse goes with uh, that individual and, and can continue to work. So as a result of that, I mean, uh, that, that's always been one of the, the real strong points uh, that I see from this. But as a result of that, we were identified um, last year by the Department of Defense as a military spouse employment partner. Uh, for recognizing uh, all the, that we do for military spouses and, and flexibility and portability are the two big things that we can provide. That's great. I mean, coming from post-military, I've been involved in extremely tiny companies and startups. And one of the things I've always looked at larger companies like Combined Insurance that is appealing is when you work at a company of their size, first of all, it generally, and it sounds like from what you're describing, there is a great training program. They have done so many millions of iterations of sales. You, you are learning a tried and true process. And you know my experience in startups is you are inventing stuff on the go. It's just kind of learning through mistakes. There's not generally formalized training, which I think a lot of people appreciate in the military is very structured training so you can learn and get up to speed very rapidly. And then the second thing that you just highlighted is Working in a large organization like this, you have so much flexibility in terms of geography. And you were pointing out, it sounds like a case where someone may be moving. It's it's not like it is a single office where if you need to move for family reasons or things like that, that you have to switch companies. 
uh, one of the appeals of a, of a large company like this is there is so such a large footprint that you are covered as your life changes and you need to move different locations. You're not locked into one location for the rest of your life. That's correct. Yeah, and, and uh, again, the, the portability is one of the key factors in, in just about everybody's uh, job search, but especially military spouses. Yep, yep. Um, and one other thing is just, um, and this may be, we can skip this if this is not applicable, but I was just kind of curious if there's a sense of, so okay, someone straight out of the military, what, what does that title look like? What does the kind of career progression look like? And I was also curious if, if the position, is it commission only, or, or how is that, that structured? Yeah, our sales positions are commissioned only. And again, we provide you all the training, all the support to, to make you successful. Uh, that the demonstration day will give you a real good sense of what it's going to take to be successful. We have uh, many people here at Combined who have been here 25, 30, 35 years. So, um, you know, it, it's obviously uh, something that, that, that some people have found a, a real home um here the the progression is we have on the sales side we have kind of two different uh lines that you can go we have the career sales agent which is uh people that you know just enjoy selling and enjoy meeting new people and enjoy uh, solving problems with those uh those new uh customers and and you can you can progress uh, up to you know very senior levels just as sales agents and the higher you go the the more commissions you make and the more benefits you get and things like that. But we also have a, a leadership track um, where after you become after you have uh, uh, proven to be a successful sales agent, then you can go to leading other sales agents and all the way up to uh, you know leading the entire sales organization. Um, so. We have two again two different tracks and and uh, you can um, you can go either way you want to depending on your own desires and we have some people that like I said that have been here thirty five years and they just they just like going out and meeting new people and and selling insurance so um, you can uh, you can basically uh, design your own career path here i'm I'm thinking of a, a quote I'd heard from someone in business school which was that the CEO always works. For their best salespeople, and, and another quote of generally the highest paid employees in any company. It's not the C-suite. It's not the ch chief executive officer, or chief operations officer. It is almost invariably the salespeople. And so I, I imagine for some listeners that thought of commission only can be um, intimidating. And it the flip side of it is is there is so much upside. You know, it may take you. Um, right. weeks or months to kind of get up to speed. But once you do, not only do you have so much um, financial upside, but it's, it's I, I imagine this will appeal to the subset of listeners that wants to bet on themselves. Like if you are confident, if you are aggressive, if you are in that sort of sales role, you, you know, like Bob said earlier, it is a meritocracy. It is your performance is judged by one thing. And I, I think for many of my friends, I think that would be intimidating. For for me, that gets me exciting because it's like, oh, it's not based on anything else. Like if I go out and crush it, I'm going to reap the reward. That's That that can be very, very motivational, even if it's not what you're you're used to. And so, um, yeah, I appreciate your, your laying out what that looks like, Bob. Well, and, and, you know, our company's been around almost 100 years and our sales process has, has evolved uh, over the years, but it's basically the same as when W. Clement Stone started it almost 100 years ago, and we call it the success system that, that never fails. And if you follow, again, our structured sales process, um, the, the way it's designed, uh, you, you, you will, uh, I mean, not, nothing's guaranteed, but you will succeed. It's called the success system that never fails because it never fails. So, um, if you have the drive, if you have um, the desire to uh, to get ahead, this is this is like owning your own business without all the overhead. So you do have. We will give you the tools to 
um, it, you know, to, to be successful, just like you mentioned. And it's, after that, it's up to you. And we, we have uh, many, many different success stories where uh, it has worked. So, And, and I, just one last plug on this is, um, again, I'm coming from this startup perspective, but if you're working with a company less than probably 100, maybe even 250 employees, um, the sales structure is, is pr- most likely somewhat volatile. It's a new product. It's still figuring out the sales cycle, how long it takes to sell, how to sell, all of those things. But, but with a company like Combine that is that large and has been doing this for so long, I'm imagining there's not a tremendous amount of variability. Like when they, they have probably had thousands of salespeople go through this process. And so when they say, this is what it looks like and this how, is how long it takes to earn a certain amount, there's a high degree of confidence there. There's just so many more data points than in a exactly. small company. And so it's not as... Um, it's it's not as high of a beta, high of a risk as as if you were joining right. something new and in this 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 unknown process. Um, That's correct. Yep. Bob, one other thing I wanted to ask about too is um, just more on the personal front of you were in the Marines for over twenty two years and am grateful for your service for that amount of time. C- could you talk about? especially for listeners who may be approaching retirement and approaching their first job search. What was that process like for you of doing that first job search after 22 years of service? I, I went to, you know, transition assistance program like, like everyone did. It's, it's obviously changed uh, over the years, but I can remember them, the, the, uh, prevailing thought was that you are going to network and you're going to find a job and then wherever that job is located that's where you're going to move when you get out of the service and and I didn't I didn't take uh, I didn't that's not the way I did it I decided that uh, my family had moved you know 17 times in 22 years and uh, I was going to let them choose where we were going to live. So that's that's how I did it. It's a little bit different than than the most traditional advice. Um, and so that's what we did. And we decided that San Antonio was going to be um, where we were going to end up when I retired. And so then I had to find a job. And the the one organization that that really stood out as a as a possibility to me was uh, it stood out because of its military friendly uh, brand and uh, what they did you know in the financial services and that was USAA so that's where I focused my job search efforts um, they were headquartered in San Antonio and. So I, I did it a little bit different than than most people would recommend, uh, but that's 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 how I that's how I started, and you know the biggest thing being of course USA's military friendly environment and veteran friendly environment. So um, I, I can't I can't guide anybody and and how they would make that decision, but that's really the first decision that you have to make is you're going to look for the job and then move to wherever that job is. Or are you going to find a location and then determine where you're going to work after that? I, I love that. It's it's something I've always been hesitant to do is to close doors of, you know, the moment you pick a geography, you're closing the doors on all the other places yep. you could live. And while sure. that is the most uncomfortable thing to do, it is the best thing you can do in your career search. The moment you start closing doors, you're able to specialize, you're able to focus rather than being too thin or you know that common statement that people say is I'm a, I'm a jack of all trades or I'll go anywhere and take any job and that right, actually makes right. it harder for people to help you because they can't think of it's just too broad of a of a set of possibilities but I imagine when when Bob was certain on you know I'm going to go to San Antonio man if he met if he ran into me or anyone else who wanted to help him in that search then i'm i'm narrowing my rolodex i'm like oh, okay who do i know in san antonio who can help you out and exactly so it's great that you were able to to put that stake in the ground initially um exactly 
I, I also wanted to ask, I, I always like to hear if there's any resources that have helped you in your civilian career, and that could be um, a book you read, a podcast, a movie, a conference you went to, a website, or, or anything that has helped you in your career that you would, list, that you would recommend to listeners. Yes, uh, it's actually an organization, and one of the things that um, I wish I had when I uh, transitioned was a personal one-on-one coach to help me through that transition, to help me write a resume, to help me um, network, to help me find you know what what kind of job I would be uh, not only good at but that I would find enjoyment in, and. You know, again, you go through the transition assistance programs, and and they're they're you know group uh, focused, uh, and there are some some organizations out there that for a fee will uh, you know will help you through that transition on a one on one basis. But there, there's an organization called the uh, American Corporate Partners that actually provides a a one on one coach, if you will, uh, to help you through those things. And I've been associated with them for uh, a number of years now, and. And they're, they're, it's a again a nonprofit. Well, um, it's not. There's no charge to the indiv- to the veteran who is uh, seeking their services, and they can help them through that. They can help uh, write a resume. They can help um, translate um, civilian or military terms into civilian terms. They can help uh, focus your efforts, like you just mentioned, on a location or an industry or. Um, just through you know, just through the mentorship program, just through the the, the counseling, or um, you know, just a kind of a, a as a friend, as a fellow veteran that's that's uh, helping a friend uh, make the transition that they made. So um, it's not a book or a, a podcast or anything, but I, I think that organization is a real, um, a real, real useful for anybody that's transitioning. I'm I'm so happy to hear you say that. So um, for listeners, uh, I'll put this in the show notes, but in episode number 151, I interviewed Timothy Cochrane from um, American Corporate Partners. I echo everything you just said. I, I had heard about ACP from someone else early on with Beyond the Uniform, and I used to um, plug their organization at the end of every episode. I had no affiliation with them. I, I still don't, but I, I think that they are such an incredible organization, and like you said, that one-on-one mentoring is so powerful. It's It can save so much time and so much heartache. And the fact that they not only have an incredible network, like they put you in contact with uh, unbelievable people. One, one of the people I interviewed, Hank, um, uh, God, I'm, I'm blanking on his name, but Hank, uh, he won or was nominated for an Academy Award. He, through American Corporate Partners, was paired with George Lucas, the, the Star Wars George, George Lucas. That was his mentor. <laughs> so not, that, not wow. that like that's always the case, but that they have a great network of people and it's all for free. And so I think that's, that's an incredible resource and I'm happy that you pointed that out. Um, well, I always like to keep the last question open-ended and that is that um, I appreciate all the answers you gave me and just everything, all the ground that we covered, but I'm sure that there's some things that I didn't ask about that, um, that you could share with listeners. And so I just want to keep it open-ended of what have we not talked about that you want to make sure that listeners know? There's one thing that, that we've that we've kind of alluded to, but um, I did, didn't uh, come right out and say it. But when you are, if there are veterans out there that are transitioning from the service or just looking for, you know, uh, another uh, another job to uh, or another career to seek, um, you really need to take a look at the organizations that have a military and, and veteran friendly. Um, association with them, and there's a couple of organizations. The Military Times does a uh, does a survey each year, or puts out a list of veteran friendly or uh, best for vets employers. Uh, GI Jobs, of course, Victory Media puts out their military friendly employer uh, list each year, and and really start there. And there's there's not only big companies, but there's smaller companies as well, um, and there's companies from every industry that that make these lists. So. I would really uh, encourage you to, to, to check out those lists and, and start there on your job search to find out which ones in your area and your geograph, uh, geography and which one in the industry that you're searching for actually have a military-friendly um, status to them. 
that's going to help you a lot and and you know there there are going to be people in those organizations that are there to to support you so i would start there and and one thing that i would add on that is a, another theme that has come up in so many of the interviews i've done is that whether you realize it or not most people myself included most people when you separate from the military miss the camaraderie and the close bonds with the people they served with and it it's one of those things like a, a fish in water you may not realize that but that is and again and just in my experience that's not typical the extent to which you have a close bond with your coworkers and the extent to which that bond goes is is very strong and so many veterans when they transition they miss that connection and that camaraderie and i think that one of the many benefits of what bob is describing is if you go to an organization that specifically aims to hire veterans you have you have a lot of that community built in. You have people with a common history. You have people with common values and common language and common understanding. And I, um, my class at Stanford Business School was about 360 students, and I was very close with many of them by the time I graduated. But on day one, the five other military veterans, I was, it was just such an incredibly tight bond immediately. And so I think that's something to consider is not only is an organization like Combined Insurance, not only are they putting, you know, putting out there that they are specifically hiring veterans, but that also brings with it the added benefit that you you will likely have a very strong community of veterans where you're working. And that that can be a big advantage. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, Bob, thank you for your support. Thank you for your time today, and, and thank you for the, the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thanks for uh, having me on the show, and uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate your support, too. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Bob. A couple quick notes before we wrap up. First of all, if you have recommendations for the show of the type of interviews or type of uh, shows that would help you in your transition, definitely shoot me a line at beyondtheuniform.io or subscribe to our newsletter. I am putting out more and more active requests there for help as well as advice. Um, it's a great source for that information. Second, if you're benefiting from the show, a great way to get the word out is by leaving a positive review on iTunes. There is a link in every single show notes to do so, but it does help get this in front of more military veterans. And lastly, check out our career coaching section. Um, most interviews cite the importance of self-knowledge. The most effective and scalable way I know of to do that is through one-on-one -on -one coaching with both a career coach and an executive coach. We have a program of subsidized coaches at beyondtheuniform.io who will take you through a six-step six-hour process over six weeks to help you identify your values, your goals, all sorts of clarifying information that will help you identify and achieve your ideal civilian career. Check it out at beyondtheuniform.io, and I will be back next week with more interviews with military veterans about their civilian career. Take care.